Welcome back to my channel. This is a no before you go to Aruba. Because I just feel like I had so much, so many questions. Um, I always, y'all know I always do my research on everywhere I go. And I just like, this trip was just a little different. I don't know why it was so different for me. I don't know, maybe it was because it was a birthday trip and there's COVID and there's just a bunch, a bunch going on. There's so many different variables to this trip. I know for me, um, while planning this trip, I had a bunch of different questions. I was trying to figure out everything, making sure I crossed all my T's out of all my I's. Y'all know I like to stay on top of things. I was trying to make sure I had everything set. I didn't need no hiccups for this birthday trip. I didn't, okay? So basically, what I'm doing is giving y'all a help of hand. In case you're thinking about going to Aruba or you... You know, just love to watch my vlogs. <laughs> Either way, I'm here to help, okay? When you book your flight and you book your resort or whatever, it is definitely, there should be some type of alert, pop-up box, something that um, sends you to a link or a website or whatever so that you can see the travel restrictions and what all you would need, blah, 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 all that. When I first booked, I booked ahead of time, way in advance, and... I wanted to see, because it's just me, I wanted to see what the form was like that I that needed to be submitted. And I wanted to see, um, there's something called an ER card. So for you guys to even get to Aruba, you need an ER card. And in order to get your ER card, you need to take a COVID test. And it has to be within a certain time frame. And they are pretty strict on the time frame. It has to be between 12 and 72 hours. So take into account your time zone. Everything everything matters, like literally. You cannot even do that unless it is 72 hours prior to you leaving. You can't even look at the form, the application, nothing. You can't see nothing until it's between that 72 hours. Which kind of made me paranoid because what if there's something I need on here that I don't have in arm's reach or I can't just get, you know, right away. But whatever. You know, <laughs> that's just me being an extra prepared all the time. So there's only certain types of COVID tests that they accept. So depending on where you're traveling to, this video is specific to Aruba. So I'm just going to be reference Aruba. You need to pay attention to what type of COVID test they accept. They do not accept the rapid test. And of course, your first line will be, well, my first line will be to get the rapid test so that I can get my results right away and then I can submit them. No, you have to get the PCR COVID test. So that is another thing to take into account. Make sure you read. There is a list of COVID tests that they will accept. The, we went with PCR. And that's just still regular COVID tests. They, you know, do the nasal swab. Nothing is really, I don't know what the difference is. Honestly, let me not, you know, lie to y'all. So um, we got our COVID test and we got our COVID test. Not 72 hours because I didn't want it to be too close to the that mark you know so we got our COVID test 48 hours before our departure because i didn't want to be too close to 12 hours and i didn't want to be close to too close to 72 hours okay <laughs> so we got our COVID test um 48 hours and then where we went thankfully they had um the very next morning they told us it takes 24 to 48 hours to get the results back so i was kind of freaking out a little bit at first because i was like Oh my gosh, like if it if they get it back in 48 hours, that's when we will be leaving. So we you can't even board your flight. Like you cannot board your flight without the ER card. Like you have to show your you get this little um QR code and like it your ER card pops up on it, which is basically everything about you. Like when I looked at when I scanned the code to see like what is this ER card? What all information does it have? It basically is all the information on your ID or your passport, um, along with um like insurance because you're supposed to have insurance to go to Aruba although I have a secret we did not get insurance um and it worked out <laughs> and I didn't we didn't not get insurance on purpose it was I saw that I needed insurance I totally forgot about it once I got my ER card I knew that was what was required although it does say insurance is required but no one ever checked that so we definitely did get by with that one um but I'm not saying do that if y'all plan on going, but I am saying 
we got away with not getting insurance. Um, but the insurance was not expensive at all. I believe it's anywhere from like 10 to $30, well, per day. So I guess it could be expensive if you plan on having a long trip. But anyways, I was pretty nervous about our COVID test not coming back in time because it was like, they said anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. However, it was, I told them like it was for travel. So they made sure that they rushed it. And thankfully they got it back literally I want to say basically like less than 12 hours truly like we went at 3 p.m. and I called them at 8 a.m. and they had my results so all I did was I sat down right in this very same spot I uh, went online and I applied for our ER card so I just basically needed my passport and my negative COVID test and I just filled out the application it was so simple straightforward easy you needed your resort information your flight information all that as well um, and that was it so you had to put in where you were going to be staying why you were coming to Aruba um, you had to answer some COVID questions you have to put in your information that's on your passport along with your passport number um, you had to put things like that. It was super easy and straightforward. I want to say it was maybe, maybe five pages and that's give or take. Don't, you know, don't hold me to that. But it was quick and simple. Like I got both of ours done in probably 10 minutes. You know what I mean? And what I did was I saved that to my laptop because I was taking my laptop with me to Aruba. So I saved it to my laptop. I also sent it to my phone, saved it to my phone. And then I texted it to my boyfriend his and mine so that i would have it in three different places like in my pictures and my screenshots in our messages and also on my computer i was not about to be over there in a vine because of anything crazy so that's basically what the er card is um they also tell you to download this aruba health app now i downloaded the aruba health app and i downloaded it right when i got my er card except I didn't use it. So like the second to last night in Aruba, I ended up deleting the app because I'm like, oh, we never needed this. Like this was stupid, you know, not stupid. This was pointless. So I deleted it. Mistake. So you did need the Aruba Health app and that's to get back home. So don't delete the app. Get the app and don't delete it. <laughs> um, so I needed the app because once you are trying to get back home you did a negative COVID test to get back into the states and you have to um, upload your ER card number to the app so that it transfers your ER card onto that app and then you also will get your test results um, the COVID test results through the app so they will email you your results and they will also send it through the app so when you're boarding your flight you have to show it through the app and so that's why you need the Aruba Health app so that is very important time sensitivity of the ER cards just to double back make sure between 12 and 72 hours if I were you I would do 48 right in the middle you get that COVID test and then you know you turn around and you get that ER card because you can apply for the ER card only 72 hours up to your departure time so for me I want to I'm not trying to push it to that last couple hours I want to make sure I'm good in case I have any hiccups I want to be able to have time to handle that you know thankfully we didn't but the time sensitive with ER cards, two was um, the Aruba Health app that is important to have. And so once we got to Aruba, everything was great. Like, let me just be the first to tell you right now if you're thinking of going to Aruba, if you're indecisive, unsure, maybe, maybe not battling between places, let me just tell you go, 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 go. I'm telling you, go, like, literally, go, okay. I can't tell you anymore like go go to Aruba I'm not kidding like it, it was so much fun this was literally the best birthday ever it was so much fun it was just like there's so many beautiful places in the world you know I've traveled a lot of places I've seen a lot of places I love a lot of places but Aruba was just a different experience like it was just different it was very different that's really all I can say it was different and it was something that I feel like everybody should experience really like there are so many different vibes other places you know what i mean but that was just like a whole different one that i feel like everybody needs to experience i had someone ask me um should they go to aruba or should they go to mexico mexico beautiful i love mexico i've been three times so far plan on going back okay love mexico but i said aruba mexico has some beautiful places but aruba is just different and if you if you're 
just on the edge, I'm telling you, go. You're not going to regret it. I promise you. I promise you you're not. It was like 10 out of 10, excellent, great. However, there are some things we got to go over because let me tell you, it's great, but you got to be prepared, okay? So for one, I am not a huge fan of staying, of switching hotels on vacation. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like the feeling of packing all your stuff up and switching over. It's kind of like you're leaving, but you're not leaving. It's just, I don't like it. I don't. However, this trip, I decided to do it because I wanted to experience Renaissance Aruba and I wanted to experience Rio Palace. Now, they're two very different resorts, both beautiful resorts, amazing resorts, amazing staff, amazing food. Like, both of them were amazing. However, they are very different experiences. The first resort we said that was Rio Palace. I like Rio because I've stayed at one before in Jamaica and I just loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. So when I saw Rio Palace, I automatically wanted to go with them because I, I know, I know y'all. What's up? Y'all was cool last time. So, you know, like let's try it in a different country. And it was awesome. It was really good. It's big and so beautiful when you go in. Um, they're very nice. The staff there was great. Um... I don't think I have any complaints about Rio Palace. So first, let me start off by saying Rio Palace is an all-inclusive resort. That's awesome. Like, that's awesome. I love all-inclusive. However, y'all know I'm a, big, I'm a big foodie, so I'm really big on um, finding places to eat while I'm there. And, yeah, I like to explore when it comes to the restaurants. You know what I mean? That's, like, a big part of me, of my research. When I travel to places, it's finding the places that I'm going to like to eat. So, all-inclusive is great. If you don't care about, you know, going off to other restaurants, book it. All-inclusive, book it. Um, it's kind of like, <clears throat> I mean, some people are referring to it, like our cab drivers, as spending your money twice when you, you know, pay for all-inclusive, but then you go out to dinner. I get it, but at the same time, like, I feel like we got our money's worth for sure. Like, we drunk all day. We ate there for breakfast and lunch you know what I mean like it was just dinner that and we did stay there for dinner one night it was but I did have reservations for all the other nights so I didn't like the fact that most of their bars were not open the only bars that were open were the was the pool bar and they have like two sides of the pool bar there's one where you know you're in the pool and you it's a swimming bar and then on the other side of that was you could just walk up you know and not be in the pool they also had the sports bar that was open, but that was it. Those were the only bars that was open. They do have like a martini bar, and the martini bar was open, but I believe for only like two or three hours out of the day, so we really never went there. I don't even know what the hours were, but they do give you a sheet upon checking in, letting you know what restaurants are open, what times, and things like that. Um, there was the Italian restaurant they had there that I really wanted to try, but it was not open the whole time we were there. So that was a bummer, but it's okay because I already had reservations elsewhere. So it's all right. I wasn't that mad, but, um, they do have, I want to say they have between six and seven restaurants. I don't know. Um, but there was a one restaurant for breakfast and lunch and that's like a buffet style. And then there was an Italian restaurant, a Japanese restaurant, um, a regular, like, super fancy one where they had like a super strict dress code there was a steakhouse the buffet and there was one more all the way down at the end i can't even recall it um but those are the restaurants they had so i think six dinner is you know from a certain time i want to say between like seven and ten i want to say but you have all those restaurants to choose from you don't need any reservations for any of the restaurants however there is a super fancy one like i said that you there is a pretty strict dress code um for that one but other than that it was great like i really did love it i loved the view i loved the people the food everything was great um breakfast and lunch basically run back to back like um i believe breakfast stops at 11 and lunch starts at like 12 30 or 12 o'clock so basically if you get up late don't worry about it you know <laughs> and breakfast and lunch like i said is buffet style but they have some of everything and the food was really good like really good so um yeah there's that it was nice because it's a beach. That's the thing. Rio Palace, the beach is right there. You literally walk right off your resort onto the beach. Rio Palace is all inclusive. So there's activities that come with the resort too, which was so fun. So fun. Like kayaking, you can snorkel. Um, and there's a few more I can't think of them, but they're super cool. And then also there's like 
water sports like stands on the beach that you can like go to and you know pay for excursions we did tubing and we also did a private boat tour so that was super fun i was screaming like a maniac i'm so happy on that video you guys cannot hear me screaming you can see me bouncing everywhere but you cannot hear me screaming i was literally screaming i felt like i wasn't breathing y'all like it felt like i was i was screaming and laughing at the same time and i don't even know how that's possible i don't but that's what was happening like i my chest was so tight listen I swear, I was like out of breath. Y'all saw me. Y'all heard me. I was out of breath getting off of there. Like, I couldn't even believe my heart was still pumping. Okay, literally. Like, it was too much. It was too much. It was so fun, but it was too much. Okay. Oh, and we was just holding on. Like, no seatbelt. You know, nothing. You just hold it on. Like, if my fingers slip, it's over for me. And that's a lot to think about while you flying through the ocean. You know, that's a lot on your mind. <laughs> so, it was fun, but it was a bit much. So if y'all have, yeah, you should experience it if you if that sounds like something you would like to experience. You know, I would I would probably do it again, but I I'm gonna have to prepare, like do a little woo side before or something, calm my nerves, cause that was a lot, okay? <laughs> but it was so fun. And then we went on a private boat tour, like you guys can sign up for other tours where it's like a big group and everything, but also we got the opportunity to do a private tour but it was just me and my boyfriend so that was really nice and we got to snorkel we went to like a sandbar it was awesome so basically what i'm saying is there's things to do there's a beach it's nice you really don't even have to leave off your resort truly everything you need on that like everything whether it's fun food drinks whatever everything is on that resort you do not need to leave it's all right at your fingertips and I, i'm not just saying that y'all know me i'm going to explore i'm going to go get something to eat 18 miles away if i got to you know no <laughs> you didn't need to do it like it was really good like i said one night we were so tired from um all the water activities we were on the water all day i think we went from like the pool to the beach then we did some water activities and then we went back to the beach it was just too much we were so tired we like totally canceled our dinner reservations and we just stayed at the resort and we ate dinner there at the steakhouse and it was good it was I it was good okay it was good so overall the review palace I would give it a 10 out of 10 um you know like I said some of the bars and restaurants were closed due to COVID and them trying to keep everything under control I understand um so I would give it a 10 out of 10 I definitely that is definitely a place I would go back to for sure like a hundred times it was beautiful 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 it was great um it was awesome so if you want like a beach experience if you want if you don't care about really leaving off your resort, Ryu Palace is definitely a place to go. Another thing about Ryu Palace is, I was at Ryu Palace. However, they have a sister resort right next door that's called Ryu something, I don't know. Um, but it's literally right next door. Like, you go out onto the beach, it's right next door. You go outside, it's right next door. Like, boom, okay? It looks like one big resort, really. And Ryu Palace is split up into three parts, three buildings. I was in the main building, which I loved. That's where I would like to be personally, but the other two sides were nice as well. Um, but yeah, so you, the great thing about that is even if you guys don't decide to stay at Ryu Palace and you want to go to the sister hotel, because the sister hotel is smaller, significantly smaller. Like, like I said, Ryu Palace is three parts. The sister hotel is like half of one part. You know what I mean? However, they have a pool, they have restaurants, they have bars, and you get to go to both of them you get to use all the restaurants all the bars so like i said it was six restaurants in ryu palace but there's others in Re the other ryu next door so i really there i'm sure you know it's more than six obviously so you can go back and forth use their pools their bars their restaurants and it's still all inclusive like once you're a guest at ryu you get to use all but all of it so that is a plus like you won't get tired there you know what i mean you won't get bored there's no way you can get bored you can't even see you can't even experience it all because there's so much to experience between the two resorts so that is a plus that's great so midway through the trip we switched resorts to renaissance aruba of course the big one the one everyone knows and loves you know and i just had to experience that i had to because what got me was I really, when I was looking online, I wasn't a huge fan of their rooms. I'm going to be honest. I was not. Um, but I really, really did, of course, want to go to Flamingo Island. 
So, um, and I know that they do have day passes. However, they only sell like 15 or something I heard. And some days they don't do it and some days they do. And once they fill up, like it's just no telling. There's no, there's not certain, you know what I mean? And I'm, I like to pretty much have a schedule. I like to know I'm going to chill that day or I'm going to do this that day. I don't want to have to like go back and forth like, oh, can I do it? Oh, no, I can't. Oh, let me find something else. I don't want to have to do that. Like that, no, not my type of AK. So I decided to just stay there. That way I know I got access anytime, any day, you know? <laughs> so we stay at the Renaissance Aruba. We switch hotels. Now, Renaissance Aruba is in downtown, or Ron just said. So there's no beach. But... Flamingo Island makes up for that because once you go on the island, you know. <laughs> so um, the pools were super nice. Um, there is two sides to the Renaissance Aruba and they're across the street from each other, but they're not directly across the street. And I feel like that was important to say because when I was hearing that they were across the street from each other, I was thinking in my head directly across the street. That's not the case. They're like, this is like Renaissance Marina and then across the street down over here. Which, when I say down, it's just a parking lot and, like, a little strip mall that separates them. Um, so, down over, not, like, a mile or nothing. Nothing crazy. Literally, is you could walk back and forth. Okay? I just want to make, put emphasis on that it's not directly across. Because that's the impression I was under. And that's not the case. So, it is across the street, but it's a little bit down. That's the Renaissance Ocean. We stayed in Renaissance Marina. The, two, the differences between the two sides is Renaissance Marina is adults only and Renaissance Ocean is family. So it's kid friendly. So we actually checked in on the ocean side and then we went over to <clears throat> the marina side. And like I said, you can walk over, but it's so cute because they got this little golf cart that goes back and forth all day. And if like for some reason they're not driving at the time, you can just say, hey, can I get the golf cart to go over and they'll just bring it right over or they'll get a driver and they'll drive you over. So it's super cool. So if you're being lazy or you just don't want to walk over there, you can use a golf cart because I did many times. <laughs> both sides were beautiful. Beautiful. Like both sides were super nice. Both sides had nice pools. The great thing I want to say about Renaissance Aruba is their pool, in which we did not know this to the last night, guys. The pool stayed open 24 hours because they had a curfew. So Aruba has a 9 p.m. curfew and you can't do nothing, okay? You can't do a thing you can't get food you can't get a fork if you needed it like literally it was like i was w looking out the window off the balcony and i swear i didn't see a car drive by for like three whole minutes it was crazy but during the day they're constantly coming you know what i mean so like i was saying it's downtown so that means shopping businesses busy it's not the relaxing beach vibe i want to make that very clear two very different vibes and i was pretty excited that i got to experience both of them um i love them both i'm really me personally i can go for either one it is a bit further down so i want to say it's like a maybe 13 minute drive uh, from rio palace to renaissance aruba or it's like a 13 minute drive maybe. Um, and so this downtown where Renda said. And then there's like where real palace was. That's like it was like a whole little like a little strip basically is what I want to say. All the hotels were lined up and it was like um, little shop. It was restaurants outside. It was like little shopping areas. It was so cute. I loved it so much. It was so cute. Now when you go downtown to downtown Orange said where renaissance is it's still super cute you know what i mean but it's like shopping bigger stores bigger mall you know renaissance is connected to the big mall that has all the big stores like gucci and prada and things like that um they did have like little stores as well, as well but not many um they didn't have many little stores i don't know i'm sure they have a mall but there was like a movie theater down there it was really a downtown you know what i mean so that's the vibe that renaissance gave however the island the being able to travel to flamingo island that's what gave it that that other relaxing like beachy feel you know what i mean so they do have renaissance aruba the good thing about them is they can give you both vibes at the same time so if you guys plan on booking renaissance aruba go for that too you know what i mean like awesome also um, we didn't know until the end of the trip, like the last day that the pool was open 24 hours. So that was awesome because, you know, although there's a curfew, you guys get to 
you get to hang out you know what i mean you don't have to go in you can get some drinks and be at the pool all night you know but we didn't have that entire last night so I'm here to tell y'all that now so that y'all can know before you go. <laughs> so the best part for me, or the most exciting part, I should say, that I was excited to, I was looking forward to, was the t boat taxi. So the boat taxi is actually in the lobby, like right there behind the little Starbucks. It's super cute. There's like a little waiting area and they come like back to back, like basically every three to five minutes. And they're just constantly going back and forth. You can go to the island as many times as you want. Um, I believe it's open from like 7 to 7. Um, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And so you can go back and forth as many times as you want. You know, there's constantly boats running. So the boat taxi is literally right in the middle of the lobby. Smack dab in the lobby, okay? It is so cool. It's about um, a seven minute drive over on the boat taxi to the flamingo island however i did have a driver at the end who cut that right down to three minutes <laughs> so he was not there's like parts of it that you can tell they have to go slower my last driver he was trying to get us there okay it was under the night he was trying to get us there <laughs> so give her that boat that drive give or take seven minutes okay um, it was so nice. Once you get to Flamingo Island, you need quarters to get the flamingo food. Um, there's also in the iguana side. Um, so the iguana side is also like the resort. So the iguana side is for the families and the flamingo side is for the adults. Now kids are allowed to go to the flamingos, but I believe there's a time of like when they first open the first two hours, I believe, is when the kids can go on the flamingo side. Other than that, it's adults only. Both sides have cabanas. We got our cabana on the iguana side. And it was so nice. Like, it was expensive, but it was so nice. I would do it again and again and again. And really, it was expensive, but it was so much included. Like, everything was included. So, it was just like, it was nice. Like, it really made the experience worth it. We got floaties. We got snorkel gear. And it was like a real snorkel mask. It wasn't like the kind with the little tube. And then, like, you know, water can get in the tube. It was not that. It was like real deal. Like, it was nice. We got um, champagne that came with the cabana. We had fresh fruit that came with it. There was like these other little snacks and waters. And it was just nice. You know, you got, you had someone waiting on you all day. And then you just put this little flag up when you need assistance. And they're like, they're checking on you nonstop. You know what I mean? Like, they were really, it was awesome. It was a hassle, like, trying to find somebody to even let them know you had a cabana. Like, trying to find out where you check in. I feel like they almost need to put something, like, a stand up when then you get off. Because you kind of just get off and then you're just there. No one's there. You have to, like, go. I had to, like, go up to the restaurant and, like, find somebody to tell them I had a cabana. And then they found me somebody else. It was just a mess. But other than that... Everything was great. Everything was 10 out of 10. I loved both of the resorts we stayed at. Ryu Palace was awesome. Renaissance Aruba was awesome. Everything that the, both of them came with was awesome. Another great thing about Renaissance is they also have all-inclusive option. So if you stay at Renaissance Aruba for four days or more, you can pick the all-inclusive package. Um, and the food is good. They are really popular for LG Steakhouse, LG Smith Steakhouse, which a lot of people go. I know when you go to Aruba, you're going to go there. I went to LG Smith Steakhouse my last night and it was so good. Okay. The service was awesome. It was so good. It was like a show. They literally come, like they have the meat in the freezer. It was kind of weird, but they come and they make your drink right at your table. It was just, it's just awesome. It's like super nice. A great experience. The food was good. I got this pasta. I got seafood pasta. It was so good. My boyfriend had got steak and I believe potatoes and mac and cheese. And it was just good. The food was good. The drinks were good. The service was awesome. I know that's a big, big, big restaurant a lot of people go to. Even if they're not staying in the Renaissance Aruba. I know that a lot of people go to Aruba and they go to that restaurant. So if you're staying in the resort, that's a plus. I actually had that... Um, that restaurant was like top on my list to go to. So I actually had it on my list, my reservations for one of the first nights. But thankfully I was able to switch it to one of the last nights because it just didn't make sense for me to be staying at Ryu Palace and then to go to Renaissance and then just to go to eat and then go check into Renaissance later. You know what I mean? So I just ended up um, changing our reservation for a day that we were actually staying in the resort. Another thing that we were going back and forth with um, that I know you guys heard me say in my room tour video, my first room tour video for Aruba was we were deciding to get a rental car or not. 
because I had got so many mixed reviews about getting a rental car. It was absolutely not necessary for us. We needed a cab to go to dinner because we chose to go to dinner. That was about it. You know what I mean? Like I said, both times we could have stayed on, at our resorts and ate, eaten there and that could have been that. You know what I mean? We only needed a cab for dinner and we basically met cabs and we would just either have them wait for us or we would just get their number and text them when we were ready. So it's like the same cab that night. You know what I mean? It's totally not necessary, in my opinion, to get a rental car. Everything is right there, like for us at least, because we did experience both sides, both parts of the strip. Um, we experienced the downtown part, and then we experienced the like cool beachy part where you know there's a lot of shops, small shops, there's a lot of stands, and you know things like that. So we was able to experience both parts, and we didn't need a rental car because literally it was outside of our resort, like. Everything was right there for both resorts. Both resorts, I would say, have so much surrounding it that you literally do not need a car. If we were to get a rental car, it probably would have been a waste because we only, like I said, needed a taxi for dinner. And that was just some of the nights. Like two of the nights we stayed on the resorts. Once at LG State House and the other time was at Ryu Palace. So it was super not necessary. So if I were you, I would save your money and just walk. There are taxis and... They're everywhere. They're literally taxis sitting outside of every single resort lined up waiting to take you somewhere. So that's never a problem. Another thing I want to tell y'all, seriously, y'all saw, y'all saw the struggle. The sunburn was crazy. Okay. I'm still suffering from the sunburn. Okay. Um, literally it was crazy. I use sunscreen, yes, for anyone asking, I use sunscreen. We were put, I was putting it on literally like every two hour, every hour and a half, every two hours, um, and still got burned. It is so hot in the room, but that sun hit different, okay? It's just that the wind is always blowing, so it feels good outside, but the sun is really dangerous, so please. Whatever bomb sunscreen y'all got, let me know, because I need that for next time, okay? I need a new sunscreen. I use sun bum right now, but apparently I need a new sunscreen, because it's not working out. Literally, I burn so bad. I burned on my nose, my face, my lips. Yeah, my arms are still peeling. Thank God my face is not peeling anymore. But my, my lips are still very much dark, giving dark, okay? And my arms are peeling super bad still, okay? So guys, be careful. Make sure you wear sunscreen. I'm telling you, it's gonna feel, the weather's gonna feel amazing because that breeze, but that sun is out there. That sun is out there and it's beaming, honey, okay? So make sure y'all use that sunscreen. Also, the very, very, very last thing I want to say, getting back home, <laughs> okay? Let me tell y'all. First of all, I was shook because most of the resorts have COVID tests at the resort. So you can go right in the lobby, get your COVID test, get your, do the whole Aruba Health app thing, be right on your merry way. <sighs> well... Although I was super on top of things, getting there, making sure everything was done, 48 hours, blah, blah, blah. That was not the case going back. I waited to the day before, about midday, to go downstairs and say I needed a COVID test. And do you know they told me that it was too late to get a COVID test there. The results would not be back in time, so I had to go to the hospital. Yep, I had to go to the hospital out of the U.S., that is something I never want to experience again. Thank God I didn't have to go inside of the actual hospital. It was a tent outside. But even still, it was just not what I was used to. You know what I mean? It would even be better to just at check-in. Just, you know, make sure you arrange something or set something up so that you can have your COVID test in enough time to get back. Because the majority of the resorts offer to give the COVID test. And you do have to pay for them. I paid $75 at the um, hospital, which I believe... At my resort, it was either the same price or maybe a little bit cheaper, like a very little bit. Um, so make sure you guys do set that up ahead of time. But let me be the example. Do not wait at the last minute to get your COVID test to return back home, okay? The last and most important tip, I mean the most important tip, guys. Because if you didn't know, I got stuck in Aruba. Yes, I did. We got to the airport, I want to say, 
maybe an hour and a half. I don't even know if it was an hour and a half. Maybe it was an hour. I don't know. I wasn't in a big rush to leave, okay? <laughs> it might have been an hour. It might have been an hour and a half. I don't know, okay? We got to the airport. Do y'all know, if you are flying with Delta, they close the Delta counter at 1.55, no matter what your departure time is. Your departure time could be 9 p.m. at night. You have to still be at that counter by 1.55 or you will not get to the back to go through customs. They will close it down and they will literally tell you you have to reschedule your flight. That's what happened to me. They don't give you no information saying come to the airport three hours before. No one tells you that. So I'm telling you for real, like the lines, guys, the very next day, it was almost the same thing. Literally, we were late. We did not, our flight, our, let's say our flight boarded or took off at 2.30. We didn't get on our flight until 3.55. We didn't sit in our seats on the plane until 3.55. Let me tell you why. The line, she wasn't playing. She was not playing. The lines back there, First of all, it was a line to get into the airport when we got there. So you come in and you think you're in the airport. No, you have to go back outside. Like they just check you in there or something. I don't know what they do really. Oh, they maybe check your um, app and your app, the, the form. But you come inside and you have to go back outside to actually enter the real airport. It was a line, a line to get into the airport. So when that line is for them to check your passport. And then once you check your passport, uh, you go through TSA and all that, a line. There was a line for every line. And I'm not playing. Like, it was literally a line for every line. It literally took us so long. It took us so long. Everybody that was in line was freaking out because... For one, apparently they didn't have as many people working because due to COVID, they haven't been that busy. However, that week happened to be the busiest week they've had all year. So they were understaffed and they were not prepared for as many people going home as they should have been. So everybody in line got these 2 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock flights. And it's like 4 o'clock, you know what I mean? So everybody tripping, like me and my boyfriend literally cut the line like two or three times and still didn't make it, still. You have to go through two customs. You have to go through Aruba's customs and the U.S. customs. And they take your bags from you just for you have to, to have to stand in another line to get your bags again. To take it through a whole other customs and a whole other TSA. It was just, the, it was the weirdest thing I've ever been through. I've had to go through two customs before, but I've never, ever, ever had to go through that type of experience. The airport is not organized how it should be it's not i've never in my life seen an airport like that so literally when i say give yourself three hours to get through that airport i'm talking like three hours maybe even four no cap and i'm not even a person who gets to the airport super early i don't really like sitting there but for that for aruba getting back home if you want to make it back home get to the airport three to four hours before i'm telling you it was a line for every line no exaggeration no exaggeration okay I got stuck there. You know what I mean? It was literally by the grace of God that we got on our flight. A man literally, we was getting through the last customs, at the U.S. customs, and literally as I'm about to, I'm grabbing my bags and we literally about to run, like try to run to our gate. You know what I mean? Literally, as we're about to hit that corner, this guy stops and he looks at us. He goes, um, JFK, New York? We're like, yeah. <laughs> and he literally took us took out his little badge and he walked us past every other line after that and we literally he's like just follow me just come this way like he literally was wiping walking us right past every line he like flashed our passports to the people were just walking it was crazy like nothing but god okay <laughs> literally we got there got to the plane they didn't even want to see no border pass nothing like they're like go ahead <laughs> i'm like okay like it was crazy 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 so we got there and thankfully we weren't the last to get on there. They were waiting for um, six other people, which was all one family. So we literally made it like just in the nick of time. And thank God that man was standing right there and could get us past all them lines. Because we literally skipped like way more lines with him, with the help of him. So that was a blessing. We finally made it back home, guys. A real world was so much fun. I would do it 10 times over. I would move to Aruba, okay? I love Aruba. <laughs> it really is one happy island. Everybody is great. No, nothing, I have nothing bad to say. It was absolutely amazing. Dude, it's so much fun. 
I love Aruba, guys, truly. And I will be back. We will be back in Aruba, okay? <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions about this vlog, about Aruba, about any of the things you guys saw me do in the other videos, please feel free to ask about anything. If you guys ever have any questions on any of my videos, please feel free to ask me. I am always here to help. I love answering you guys' questions because I know for me, I be having a lot of questions. I be wanting to know how, when, where, who, and the details of all that so please feel free to ask me any questions down below guys and make sure you like this video and comment and subscribe make sure to turn those post notifications on though because y'all know we not done y'all know we back at it we're back at it you know on the next flight soon so we'll see you guys then <laughs>